Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and happy Easter. It's Easter Sunday. If you're celebrating, happy Easter. Get some Easter eggs and some really good chocolate. That always helps, at least it helps me. Um, I was thinking uh, about the video that I wanted to film today and then I thought I hadn't done just a chatty check-in uh, for quite a while, I think over a month. And so I thought, let's do that for Easter, a chatty check-in. Um, I don't know, I'm not going to talk too long about uh, Corona because I feel that probably nobody really wants to hear about that when they're watching um, a YouTube video done by me. Um, but there's there's one thing uh, that I wanted uh, to mention and that is a lot of you, I suppose, uh, are currently working from home, so home office. Um, that's a very uncommon thing here in, in Germany. I don't know how that is elsewhere in the world. Um, and I watch videos or hear uh, things on uh, on social media how people struggle, uh, you know, with home office, especially if they also have children and the children are at home because the schools are closed. Um, and um, for me personally, it's it's not really that much of a difference because I work from home most of the time anyway, uh, especially when I do my writing, my books, I do that from home. Uh, but I have two paying jobs. <laughs> Writing jobs are not really paying jobs. Um, and for those, I normally commute. Um, and that's not happening at the moment. So it's rather an advantage for me because I don't have to commute uh, to my jobs. And one of the commutes is rather long uh, because it's a job in the Netherlands and I live in Cologne. So it's a three and a half hour train ride that I have to take uh, one way uh, Monday morning. And then I come back either Monday evening or I stay overnight, come back on Tuesday, another three and a half hours. So I'm like seven hours less of commuting is not a bad thing for me. Um, but anyway, uh, so I'm familiar with how it is working from home and I have also the luxury of having um, a study. This, what you see here, where I always film, is my study where I have a desk. I live alone, so no children, um, you know, running around or breaking my concentration or a partner who, I don't know, <laughs> asks me to do something that I don't want to do at the moment. Um but there, there was a video uh, done by Greg from uh, Supposedly Fun, who is also quite familiar with home uh, working from home. And he's giving some tips. And I thought uh, that they were really helpful and valuable for people who have never done home office. So I will leave a link uh, to that video down below if you, you know, are struggling with how to work from home. Um, and I think that the two tips that, that I felt were most valuable because when I think back uh, uh, to my own experience when I started working from home because I used to be a lawyer so I went to the office every day um, uh, the the two things that really helped me to the in the transition to home office was first I had a dedicated workspace even before I had a study so a, a separate room but at least I I didn't, you know, just sit on the couch and work from there or sit at the kitchen table. Uh, but I made a little workspace uh, back then. It was in my uh, bedroom where I just put a little desk in my computer so that I knew this was me going to work. Um, and the second thing was that I kept office hours, so to speak. Um, uh, I mean, I didn't get dressed up like I would normally have done when I was going to the office, uh, but I did change from my night pajamas to something else, more comfortable, of course, because I didn't have to go out and meet people professionally, but something else so that in my mind, you know, it switches from being at home to being at the office. But anyway, check out uh, Greg's video. I thought it was really helpful. Um, 
The other thing I wanted to talk about, because in these chatty uh, check-ins, I also talk about my work, my writing work. And uh, um, I told you, I think, not in the last one, but in the one before, that I've finished a, a novel, a new novel. Um, I'm, I think I handed in the last draft in January or February or something. And uh, even though I'm writing, I've, writ I've written this particular novel in English, my quote-unquote home publisher is a Dutch publishing company in, in Amsterdam uh, who, who publishes all my, my books, especially my, my fiction, uh, and they translate the book into Dutch first, so it comes out in Holland in Dutch first, always, no matter what language I write in. Um, but anyway, it will come out in Dutch uh, in September. Um, I will insert the Dutch cover here with the Dutch title, uh, the Juiste Houding, which means something of the right attitude. Um, and it's about um, uh, art, uh, forgery. It's set in the US just before um, Trump announced his candidacy for the presidency. So in the spring of 2015 um, and I wanted to explore the topics of what is real, what is fake, what is um, fact and what is fiction and I chose the, the, the theme or context of art, of forgeries and we have a main character, uh, Elias, who used to be uh, an art recovery lawyer, so helping people uh, getting back their lost art, especially, you know, all the pieces of art that were looted and stolen in Germany and other places during uh, the Nazi regime. Uh, but he's now, uh, Elias is now working quietly as a professor, but then he is, um, uh, he met, he meets, I should say, he meets um, a very flamboyant entrepreneur, Tony, and uh, Tony tells him that uh, he probably has found a very famous lost piece of art and he needs Elias to help him figure out uh, the, you know, the legal details. And then the story takes off from there, um, exploring, like I said, the theme of what is fake, what is real, what is fact, what is fiction, but also uh, Elias very soon finds himself in a situation where he has to make some difficult choices. So how much is it worth to you uh, to find out the truth and speak the truth, to power especially? So anyway, that's the new book. Um, it was supposed to go uh, to the London Book Fair uh, in, in March, but obviously the book fair has been cancelled. So I'm still hoping um, that the original English manuscript um, will be sold to an English-speaking uh, country and hopefully to many, many other countries as well in translation. Uh, but I will uh, keep you posted. Um, what else uh, can I talk to you about? Oh yeah, um, home office and fitness. You might have seen that I'm wearing the Fitbit, I think it's called in English, uh, watch, which counts your steps. So I'm trying, even though I'm in lockdown and I'm not leaving the house uh, unless it's really necessary to do groceries once every 10 days or something. I don't have to leave the house to go to work, obviously. Um, I go out for regular walks at least once or twice a day. I'm still, we are still allowed to do that um, on your own. You're not allowed to do that with other people or in a group. Um, but I live in the city, so it's not that I can take a nice long walk, you know, in a park or in a forest or whatever. But I felt um, that April and May, um, because I'm now, it's already has been already decided from both my, my jobs that we will have mandatory home office April and May. And I felt I'm mostly sitting on my bum and not doing much. And that's not good for me not, you know, exercise, the gyms are closed. And so Doris from all the books and I, we are doing a virtual walk. We are walking or hiking <laughs> um, the Scottish Highland Trail. I leave a link to the website Walking for Fun down below. And basically what you do is you just walk either, you know, inside or 
outside or however you can manage and you count your steps with the with the watch and at the end of the day uh you uh, uh insert the steps in on the website and then you see how far you came and uh, uh, there are pictures of you know, the walk you took. Um, and for me, that really works um, because I need a goal and I need an incentive and I know, and I need a partner. So I'm really happy that Doris is walking with me um, because I, I'm a lazy bum. And if I, but as soon as I have a daily goal to reach, I don't reach it every day. It's quite it's seven miles or something a day and I'm averaging, you know, five, six miles, but that's probably five or six miles more than I would normally walk. So the idea that I have to uh, reach a goal that um, I'm sort of held accountable um, uh, by Doris and by this website, yeah, it just works for me. Anyway, and um, to end this video, I want to at least briefly talk about my uh, two of my current reads, which are both buddy reads and both books I haven't really talked about in, in other videos. Um, and um, I, I don't know how you are doing with your reading, but I had at the beginning of the lockdown and when the corona uh, uh, crisis really hit here in, in Germany, I had difficulties concentrating. I was watching the news obsessively. I couldn't really concentrate on anything um, other than trying to get information about this pandemic and about the virus. And one thing that sort of helped me get out of this uh, were also buddy reads, because like with the virtual walk that I talked about a minute ago, it, it gives me a goal. I have to check in with my buddy reader. Uh, I have to read a certain amount. Um, and most people who my buddy read with had the same issue. So it's not really a problem if you're sometimes a bit behind, you know. Um, and one of the books uh, that I'm currently buddy reading with Doris from all the books is Jess Kitt, uh, Things in Jars, which was published last year. And if you're following my channel, you know um, that I really, really loved uh, the Jess Kitt's previous book, The Hoarder. Um, I, I like her quirky style and the quirky stories she tells with ghosts and, um, you know, dead people walking around. And I know that's normally not my thing, but the playfulness, Jess Kidd has a way of, of playing with it that I just think it's delightful. And this one, uh, Things in Jars, is a historical novel. It's set uh, in two timelines in Victorian London in the eight, uh, 1840s and 1860s. And we follow a main character, Briddy, who is a female private investigator um, specializing in the odd cases. Um, and she's... Uh, investigating in this book the disappearance of a child, Christabel, and something is very odd with this child. Obviously, the child can read your thoughts or, you know, some, something is off. Um, and we learn a little bit about Br uh, Brady's backstory. She was an orphan um, and, and then taken in um, by a wealthy doctor who taught her, uh, you know, uh, uh, to work as a, a yeah investigator um i don't want to spoil anything so it's yeah it's really delightful uh, playful uh, we are about halfway through now and i'm i'm enjoying uh, myself Im immensely um and the second book i want to mention briefly is a book that i'm reading with nashua from nashua s um, I leave a link to her channel as well down below and to, uh, also Joe Smith, who most of you will be familiar with. She had, she doesn't have a channel, unfortunately, but she is a very regular commenter. Um, and we're reading a Pakistani novel by Babsi Sitwa, Cracking India, which was first published in 1988. Um, and it is about the partition in the 1940s, late 1940s, when Pakistan was made. Um, the main character is a young child. Um, she is four years old when the book opens at the beginning of the 1940s. Um, 
and I don't like child narration normally at all. But in this case, it's made very clear from the start by the way the child uh, uh, Lenny narrates the story that this is told from adult Lenny looking back. Uh, and I can I can handle that. And we get uh, it's set in Lahore and we get a lot of characters, a very uh, colorful community made up of all kinds of religion and ethnicity. And then, of course, the violence hit um, uh, during the partition uh, struggle. Um, it's it's really well written. I, I love the story. I love to learn more uh, about this time in history, Indian and Pakistani history. And of course, uh, I'm really lucky that Najwa, who lives in Pakistan, who is from Islamabad, um, reads the, the book with Joe and me, because she can explain things to us that ignorant me, at least, I don't want to speak about Joe, but ignorant me, at least, doesn't know. So that's uh, also an absolute delight to read at the moment. And I guess this is it for the chatty check-in. Please, all, uh, all of you, stay safe and healthy. Take good care of yourself, whether you are in home office or, or, or not. Um, I'm looking forward to your comments, as always. And especially for Lori, I will talk to you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.